Good morning. Thanks for joining us for this uh, launch of a Terrier improved Orion sounding rocket. This is in support of the Rock On mission right here at Wallops Island R in Wallops Island, Virginia. Go ahead. Check in now with ROA making some settings. Elevation 83.0. Copy that. Check 97. You can hear as the ROA goes through the checklist here this morning. They've all been here for four or five hours preparing for the uh, vehicle you see there on the pad, on the rail, ready to launch this morning. The window opens in about 14 minutes at 0530. This mission is pairing experiments designed by students and faculty from the Rock On and Rocksat C programs. I just paused there because we heard some more from uh, inside the RCC. They're doing final wind waiting settings in preparation of launch. The Rock On students have spent the past week here at Wallops. They've been all over the campus learning how to build an experiment step by step, which uh, the Rocksat C student groups developed their experiments off site and integrated them into the rocket right here at Wallops with our assembling rocket program office. Today's launch, as I said, opens up at 5 30 a.m. and we have until 9 30 to launch this vehicle, which will go offshore and then be recovered. You can hear. RSO TD. RSO, item 9A, status of hazard area clearance. Hazard areas are within risk limit. Copy, check 9-8. LPM, PM. LPM. Confirmed, timing switches for high-speed cameras are enabled. LPM confirms, switches are enabled. As you can hear there, the PM's checking in with our LPM. PM would be the project manager uh, located in the RCC. And the LPM is out on the island as the launch pad manager. Permission to begin terminal count. And we are about to concurs. enter the, the uh, terminal count. As you heard the PM check in with our test director and get permission to enter terminal count, meaning we are inside of 15 minutes, one five minutes from launch of the Terrier improved Orion rock on vehicle here from Wallops Flight Facility in Wallops Island, Virginia. This mission, this uh, mission as I mentioned, it's a Terry improved Orion sounding rocket and will carry student experiments for the Rock On mission. This is a two-stage rocket, meaning it has two separate engines that fire in sequence to reach higher altitudes. The first stage being the Terrier improved motor, while the second stage uses the Orion motor. All the motors are stages, you'll hear that word, in rocketry powered by solid fuel, which will burn quickly, meaning these will be very fast rockets off the rail. So if you're out there watching, have your uh, cameras ready. It will fly off the rail uh, much faster than, say, an Antares type launch if you've been here for one of those in the past. The Rock On Terrier improved Orion payla payload weight 663 pounds, and it's 203.5 inches. Sounding rockets are typically used to gather information about specific phenomena or to test new technologies or instruments in a space like environment. We're taking them right to the edge of space with this suborbital launch today. The sounding rockets are not designed to reach orbit or stay in space for an extended period of time. They're designed to reach suborbital altitudes, typically between 50 and 1,500, 1, 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface before returning to the ground. This rocket today is expected to reach a maximum altitude of 173 kilometers into the air. One of the advantages of using sounding rockets is that they're relatively inexpensive and quick to develop and launch compared to larger rockets. This makes them a valuable tool for scientific research and technology tests. And today we're uh, taking advantage of this vehicle for many universities to load their experiments on board. As I stated earlier, we will launch this out into the Atlantic where our ships are standing by to recover the payload, bring it back to shore, and all the students and uh, the PIs, principal investigators, will get your experiments back and then go back to their schools and study the results of girding the edge of space and coming back to earth payload as i mentioned a payload 
is the part of the rocket that carries the instruments. The equipment or materials for a mission on this rocket, it's the red section near the nose cone. If you can see it there on the feed, right at the top before it gets pointy, if you will, the pointy end going out, the red section there. The term payload can refer to a wide variety of objects from scientific instruments, from satellites to cargo. The one thing all payloads have in common is that they're being sent to space for a specific purpose and they're the reason for this launch today and this rocket, this vehicle. One of the challenges when designing a rocket payload is making sure it's properly protected during launch. Rockets experience extreme heat, pressure, and vibrations during launch. So payloads must be designed to withstand these conditions. The payload for this rocket was designed, built, and tested right here at NASA's oh, Wallace Flight Facility. ROA. Let's check this in with ROA. Terrier Orion launching from pad 250K launcher. Please stand by for station checks. All stations should announce status as go or no go on channel one. RC. RC go. MNO. MNO go. Programmer. Programmer go. Elwo. Elwo go. LC. LC go. PLC. PLC go. LPM. LPM go. SCO. SCOs go. RCE. RCE go. MM. MM go. SRPO. SRPOs go. PM. PM is go. RSO? RSO is go. TD. TD is go. All stations are responsible for reviewing the go, no go criteria listed in the OD. Check 103. We just heard all the station checks there, ROA checking in with various folks throughout the range, PM, LPM, TD. SEO, who is our surveillance coordinator, uh, and that's the, the, the folks that will give us our final, as you heard earlier, that we are clear. The hazard area is clear. I don't think we're working any issues with foulers into the hazard area. The safety has done their analysis and decided that we are good to go to launch today's vehicle. On board today's rocket, experiments for more than 20 college teams who participated in the Rock Lawn program. The students spent the past week at Wallops where they learned to build small, identical experiments from scratch. The students then watched their experiments get installed into the rocket, and now they are excitedly waiting for them to be launched into space. They're out on our island right now waiting with their leaders uh, from the various institutions, and uh, they will get to see this from up close out on Wallops Island and the uh, very, very close to the Pad Zero 2 50K launcher. Final when weighted settings for 50K when available. Final when weighted settings, azimuth 105.1, elevation 82.9. Azimuth 105.1, elevation 82.9. Good copy. LC, ROA. Go for LC. Set 50K launcher, final wind weighted settings to azimuth 105.1, elevation 82.9. Copy and work. As we just heard there, the ROA has relayed the final wind weighting settings out to the LC launch control on the island, which is, uh, you heard azimuth and elevation. That is uh, exactly what you're thinking. That's where they're pointing the rail and where this vehicle will go uh, downrange. 50K launcher final wind weighted settings are set to azimuth 105.1, elevation 82.9. Copy that, check 106. ROA's moving through the checklist rather quickly today. We're at 106, right on time for that 0530 window opening. Along with the Rock On experiments today, the rocket is also carrying the Rocksat C student experiments from six additional colleges and universities totaling 26 different academia institutions that have experiments on board this. One of those includes a probe to test the density of electrons in the upper atmosphere, a 3D printer, and a power generator that will harness energy from the motion of the rocket. The Rocksat C program also includes 80 experiments from students participating in cubes in space, which provides the opportunity for students ages 11 to 18 to fly experiments on sounding rockets and scientific balloons. I'm going to go home and tell my kids they're slackers because they're not involved with this right now. 11, 18. Very young kids out there today. And uh, students, I'll say, not kids, involved with this. 
Uh, some of the institutions involved today, Tidewater Community College, Louisiana State University, Temple University, the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, University of Hartford, University of Alaska at Anchorage, Stevens Institute of Technology, just are just a few of the institutions. The Cubes in Space, as we mentioned earlier, it provides young students ages 12 to 18 with a unique opportunity to conduct, conduct scientific and engineering experiments in space where students will integrate their unique experiments into small four by four by four centimeter clear and rigid plastic payload cubes. Up to 80 of those unique student experiments are integrated into the nose cone of the rocket. And previous cubes and space experiments included sending samples of human teeth to study the effects on radiation while in space and if mouth guards of different materials could reduce those effects. So some of the experiments here have an effect on manned flight uh, that NASA is also working towards in the future. RCPM. Go for RC. Confirm no change on internals. RC confirm no change. DLC check one one three. T-minus two minutes and counting. You just heard we were at T-minus two minutes and counting. Now passing one minute, 50 seconds, five zero seconds. Very excited for this launch today. Of course, Wallops launched their first rocket, June 27th, 1945, as we celebrate our 80th year here at Wallops Flight Facility and the launching of our small test range for guided missile research to support airspace and science exploration and technology development worldwide as NASA's premier location for suborbital and small orbital activities. We've got 1,100 employees here at Wallops, support scientists gathering a deeper understanding of Earth and the universe around us using sounding rockets, scientific balloons, spacecraft, and also aircraft from our research airport here at NASA's only owned rocket launch range for suborbital and orbital rockets. We're now passing 60 minute. seconds. We're going to listen in to the RCC for the final minute prior to launching the Rock On vehicle this morning. 50 seconds. MM, ROA. MM. Announce payload status as go or no go. Payload status is go. 40 seconds. Copy that. Terrier armed. 30 seconds. 20 seconds. Mark 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, mark. And as you can see, the Terrier improved Orion sounding rocket for the Rock On mission has left our 50K rail here at Wallace Flight Facility. Let's listen in now as we get some downrange talk from the RCC. Radar tracking. As you heard, our radars are tracking the vehicle. We have boresight radars here on site. And uh, these folks are phenomenal at tracking this fast moving vehicle off the rail and then downrange. Trying to give the opportunity now to still listen into RCC audio. They will indicate splash at some point, which is when we will release 
our vessels to enter the hazard area and recover the vehicle. If you're out there, you might have seen stage two ignite by now. Can't tell here on my feed in the room, but you'll see the, uh, the fire will go out and then reignite. This will be stage two, taking it higher to its planned 100. We have a correction on that 140 or 119 kilometer height at the apex. Not much audio coming from the RCC right now. We're showing offshore now. Beautiful morning here. Wild Flight Facility just ahead of sunrise. A little bit of a cloud deck. We're going to stay with it just a little while longer to see if we can get splash. Still listening in for some range audio from our folks letting us know the result of downrange. And some of that's happening on other channels as well, uh, internal here to Wallops. Uh, as we celebrate, we know this is, we've been doing the Rock On mission for over a decade here at Wallops. And uh, it's one of the celebrated two student launches that we do here, Rock On, Rock Set. Uh, Rock On being usually in June, and then Rock Set will happen in August. This being, of course, the Terrier improved Orion rock on sounding rocket from right here, Wild Island, Virginia, that began some 80 years ago in 1945 when the Navy gave uh, this to NACA before it became NASA. And the rest was history. We do want to mention that we'll have some photographs up on the website and social media very soon as our social media folks here at Wallops are working diligently. And there we can see as the sun is rising, light out on the Atlantic, and we are awaiting the safe recovery of this rock on vehicle. Thank you all for joining us. Again, look for the pictures on our website. We'll talk to you soon.